Welcome back, viewers of Let's Talk America with host Shana Thornton Radio. Of course, I am Shana, and we welcome you to another dynamic episode of Real Talk, where we put the spotlight on the trending issues you want to know more about. Um, right now, we have an amazing expert that's going to break down some important information. We're talking about your health. We're talking about common drugs that you're being placed on and potential side effects that you need to be fully made aware of and what can you do uh, to help prevent it? And what do you do if you're actually going through perhaps the side effect? We're going to be talking about nutrition depletion from some very common prescribed drugs. I'm no expert, but I am so excited and honored right now to have a newcomer to this show. He's no newcomer to medicine, but his first time on Let's Talk America Radio. It's Dr. Mark Ratner's debut. Doctor, welcome to the program. Thank you, Shana. Super excited to have you on. Now, we have a tradition here on Rural Talk of Let's Talk America Radio, where we ask our exclusive experts and guests, such as yourself, to really give us your journey in your own words in two minutes or less. I've read the bio, I read the resume, the CV, it's super impressive. But as a board certified urologist, who right now is the, of course, chief science officer for Thorologics, a company that's really on, on doing a lot of innovative things and messaging out there. Um, tell us what got you to this point. How does a urologist turn into an advocate of helping wow. consumers and patients with, in terms of knowing medicine and side effects? Sure. So um, before I went to medical school, um, I did a master's degree program in nutritional biochemistry. Uh, that was, as you can tell by my gray hair, a few years ago. Um, and um, I, I had an interest back then in nutrition. Um, then after medical school, I went off and trained in, uh, in urology and then subspecialized in male fertility. Um, and honestly, for a number of years, I kind of just had put the nutrition aspects of my training aside. Um, and that was really until about 20 years ago. Uh, because at that point, there was some very interesting science coming out about the impact of nutrition on men's health, prostate health, fertility health. Um, and that science led me and some other docs to lead, they led, it led us to uh, form a company called Therologics, which I am now the chief science officer of. The company's been around for 20 years. Um, and uh, I saw patients, I was in practice, active practice for 32 years, uh, stopped seeing patients about two years ago. Now I'm full-time as the chief science officer at Therologics. Wow. So what a journey. I mean, certainly experience um, at this topic that we're going to talk about. Uh, and it's an interesting one because so many people are on so many different medications. You know that. I don't need to tell you that, doctor, from hypertension to dyslipidemia to low vitamin D, all sort of deficiencies. And of course, I know as a physician, you would tell us to make sure you're seeing your provider, making sure you're up to date on the latest technology, the latest medical treatments. Um, and, but one of the things that we we unfortunately sometimes do have to think about is what side effect happens when you're placed on these medications. Um, tell us some of the most common um, nutrition depletions that happen with certain medicines, because many of our viewers, of course, have some of those same conditions I mentioned on top of lupus and diabetes. But what's some of the most common ones we sure. see a lot of the depletions that occur with? So the two of the medications that are uh, in, the, in the absolutely in the top 10 most commonly taken medications here in the uh, United States are what we call acid blocking medications. Okay, there's a class of medications which are called PPIs, which is short for proton pump inhibitors. These are medicines that are taken by individuals who have chronic heartburn, acid reflux. 20 million Americans take a PPI, an acid blocking medication every day. Now the medicines in that class of, of, uh, of, of drugs include things like Prilosec, Nexium, um, Prevacid, Protonix. All of those used to be prescription medications. They're now available over the counter. And so Prilosec, which was the old brand name is now called Omeprazole, that's the generic. Um, those medicines, which are taken, I think they're the, the number four most taken medicines in the United States at this point, um, they cause very significant reduction in the absorption of both magnesium and vitamin B12 from our diet. And so 
there's a significant risk of developing a depletion in our body of those nutrients. Wow, so that's very interesting. Now, tell me this for those that are listening, because many people take those medications, like you said, many are over the counter now, um, very common for people to have it, young people as well, middle age, and also elderly individuals. If they have that depletion that's taking place, what would the symptoms be? Would they be able to know? Is the body giving them warning signs? So vitamin B12 is most important for, it's very important for producing our red blood cells. People who have vitamin B12 deficiency become anemic. They are tired all the time. They lose energy. Um, magnesium, the other nutrient that I mentioned, um, I have a personal experience um, with magnesium and Prilosec. And so actually, uh, I'll, let me tell you, I'll tell you this story because I think it's, it's, a, it's a little embarrassing, but I think it's, uh, it's, it's important to hear. Um, about 20 years ago, uh, I talked to a friend of mine who was an internist, practiced down the hall from me, uh, and I told him I was having heartburn almost every day. I had chronic acid reflux. I was sort of miserable with it. And he gave me some samples of uh, a medicine called uh, Prilosec, uh, which was fairly new back then. It was prescription only. And what it does is it stops your stomach from producing acid. Well, I started taking these samples and it was like somebody had just flipped a switch. It was like a miracle. The acid production in my stomach stopped. My symptoms went completely away. And I just kept taking it. I mean, it was, it was just an amazing drug, okay? Um, and then about seven or eight years ago, one night, middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning, I woke up, my heart was just pounding out of my chest. I had developed an irregular heartbeat, irregular heart rhythm. Uh, rushed to the emergency room, put an intravenous in my arm. They gave me medication, which corrected the heart thing, but they ran some tests. And what they discovered was that my magnesium level was low. And the ER doctor said, geez, uh, I wonder why you would have a low magnesium like this. Let's look at your list of medications. Okay. And it was, it was that doctor who said to me, how long have you been taking the Prilosec, Omeprazole? I said, probably about 10 years. And he said, that's what's doing it it blocks your magnesium absorption. And I was embarrassed. I mean, I, you know, I was, I'm a doctor. I should know that. Right. Um, so I've actually written an ebook and the ebook, the ebook is called the prisoner of Prilosec. And now why did I call it that? The reason is because I can't get off the Prilosec. Anybody who is taking one of those acid blocking medications, if you take a PPI, like Prilosec, Nexium, Prevacid, Protonix, if you take one of those medications for more than a few months, and then you try to stop it, even if you taper down off of it gradually, okay. your stomach rebounds, its acid production rebounds, and you just feel it's terrible. You have chest pain, abdominal pain, diarrhea. It is just misery, and it's, it's basically impossible to stop it. If you go on the internet, if you Google stopping Prilosec, how to stop Prilosec, you will find several dozen websites, blogs, um, people telling how they tried to do it. It's, it's very, very difficult. Right. So the bottom line is, even after that, I still take Prilosec because okay. I, just, I just couldn't get off it. So what I do now to protect myself is I supplement magnesium I and vitamin B12. So yeah. that that's basically um, what my experience was. My if I if I had to give advice, I would basically say um, be careful with with those with those medications. Yes. Um, you can buy them now without a prescription. That's right. And of those of the 20 million people that are estimated to take a PPI every day, yes. probably about 70%, almost three quarters of them are taking it over the counter without a doctor's supervision. Correct. And, and so they're basically self-medicating and they're putting themselves in jeopardy. Wow. So 
Um, that is why um, this ebook, yes, it's called the, Pris the Prisoner of Prilosec. And really, what what I talk about is not only my own story, but sort of how you can avoid getting onto a, a, a medication. What are the yes. tips for in terms of diet and lifestyle management that okay. might help reduce? Um, the signs and symptoms of, of acid reflux. Um, what you need to do if you are stuck on one of these medicines? How do you protect yourself? Um, and you know, it's it's basically just intended to inform the reader yes. all about this problem and and kind of how to stay out of trouble. I love it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching Dr. Mark Ratner. He is a board certified urologist. He is right now the chief science officer um, at Thorologics. And we are having an in-depth conversation about potential uh, dangerous side effects of some commonly prescribed medication that most people don't really think about. You know, thank you so much for being transparent about your experience um, and that situation that happened, of course, with you and your depletion of B12. I have to ask this, when we get on any medication, and, and you know it's a long list of them that we can be on, or supplements as well that you don't always need a prescription for, that you can get from other types of shops, you know, I can't help but think, should we be proactive about informing the pharmacist about what other drugs we are on? Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, this, this is, you know, if you go in... People will, you know, when we discuss this, sometimes um, people will say, well, how can I check my magnesium level? How can I check my B12 level? When you go into the doctor, if you're taking this med type of medication okay. without the prescription from a doctor, you, you still need to tell the doctor you're taking it because yeah. the doctor can check your B12 level, check your magnesium level. Uh, it's just a simple blood test. And okay. when you're getting all the other stuff done that you might be getting on a yearly basis, they can add that in. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, talk to me right now about even supplements or over the counter in particular, because I can see that being more of a common in the sense where people are like, well, um, I keep hearing great things about vitamin D and I want to be as healthy as possible. And so I got it over the counter. I got it from a local grocery store or natural herb shop. And I've decided I'm going to take three or four a day. How critical is it to make sure that we're taking the right dosage, Dr. Ratner? Because, you know, you hear people casually say, well, you know, it's good to have um, this in my, my body if it's it's vitamin B or magnesium or vitamin C. And in their minds, they're thinking it's COVID, it's flu season. I'll just really triple up on the vitamin C because that's going to help me. Yeah. So, those so the, the, yeah. This is a really important question. And, and it's, a, it's a great point because there's a very common misconception People think, well, if a little bit is good for me, then more must be better, right? Yeah. Um, and and that is generally not the case. Now, there are, in terms of supplements, um, you know, vitamins are broken down into two big categories. We have what we call water soluble vitamins, and then fat soluble vitamins. The water soluble vitamins are all the B vitamins, like vitamin B1, B2. Folic acid, niacin, B12, uh, pyridoxine, which is B6. Vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin. The fat soluble vitamins are vitamin A, D, E, and K. If you take too much of a water soluble vitamin, you're generally just going to, uh, excuse my French, you're going to pee out the excess, okay? Um, that's a urologic term. Um, <laughs> You know, it's hard to get yourself in trouble taking too much of the B vitamins or vitamin C. It's possible. I mean, you can do it, um, but there's less danger of overdosing. The fat soluble vitamins, though, when you take those in too much of a, a, a dose, your body is starting, it will store them. And so you can start to build up levels and get toxic. Um, so you really do have to be more careful with the fat soluble vitamins as well. Um, Minerals are important and minerals can also be very dangerous. So um, the government has set what we call tolerable upper limits. And you can find this on the internet. It's, it's very easily found for every one of these nutrients, they'll say, don't take more than X per day. Um, for vitamin C, it's 4,000 units, um, which is about uh, 80 micrograms. Okay. Um, you know, for each nutrient, um, they set that upper limit. You can find that on the internet.
Yeah, that is so, so key. Talk to me right now, because, um, you know, there are many people that have done some additional research since COVID has hit that had more time at home. Um, they they don't play a doctor on TV, but they'll say, hey, I'm going to get as much information as possible. And so many people have, uh, if you will, to me, awakened to natural um, living in terms of medication, perhaps, or other therapies, um, which I think I'm sure you would encourage people to educate themselves and speak about it with their providers as well. Um, but I do happen to believe that there is a notion sometimes that, well, if we see the label natural on something, be it the grocery store, then the local herb shop, or if it's on our favorite online store online, that somehow it's different. It's not like the prescription or like what Dr. Ratner talked about, because it's natural. And if it's natural from the environment with very little chemicals or ingredients, that somehow it's fine for me and I'm not as conscious or aware of how much of the dosage I'm taking. Talk to us about what it truly means when there's a label thrown on it saying natural, if you will. Is that Does that always mean that we don't have to be as concerned as it is with other drugs that are more commonly known that have commercials? No, no. And, and it's, it's the word natural is just a marketing buzzword. There, there really, there's no, un, there is no uniformly agreed upon definition for the word, what the word natural means. All natural. I mean, you see it on everything from ice cream to, you know, to, to fruit juices and, and um, it, it's, you know, in, it's in the supplement world, um, all natural is, uh, is, it's pretty much meaningless. It's just really just marketing. Um, so it, it doesn't really have a defined, a well-defined meaning. You're right. Yeah. And, and because of that, it means that consumers and patients still need to mention this to the pharmacist or the doctors, right? And not say, sure. well, I mean, because I know people that are educated, they're like, well, it's like water, it's, it's no big deal. But you're saying not necessarily because thank you for pointing out that natural is more of a marketing term than it is based in science. It's not, it has no scientific meaning. I see. It really doesn't. Now, okay, in the supplement world, okay, it, it really is buyer beware, okay? Because the supplement industry is, is loosely regulated. Okay. okay? The, the FDA does not do uh, um, extremely uh, uh, aggressive oversight. And so oh. there, there are actually two nonprofit independent programs in the United States which certify dietary supplements. And what they certify them for is that they are content accurate, which okay. means what's on the label of the bottle is actually guaranteed to be what's in the pill. Uh, and they're free from any kind of contaminants and impurities. And so those two, pra those two programs, one is called USP, uh, which stands for U US Pharmacopeia. And you'll see there's like a little logo on the bottle that says USP. And the other one is called NSF. If, if any of your listeners go to purchase a supplement, whether it's on at Amazon online or in the corner drugstore. Yes. If you want to be certain about safety and content accuracy and that you're not taking too much, look for either USP or NSF okay. on a label, on the label of the bottle. Um, and that is essentially a guarantee, uh, not necessarily of efficacy, but absolutely of safety content accuracy and product purity. Um, and, and so those are two things, two, two different programs that I think um, your listeners should definitely be uh, aware of. Thank you so much. And what a great conversation, a very informative one. We are speaking with the one and only board certified neurologist, Dr. Mark Ratner. He is breaking down, wrapping up an important conversation about uh, potential dangerous side effects of commonly prescribed drugs. And, and I've got to bring this up before we wrap up, doctor, that you, you've explained that we have to be aware that we need to have these conversations with our providers and pharmacists as well to make sure that we're not overdosing or um, not getting enough of what we need, no matter if it's prescribed or over the counter or so-called natural commercials, you pointed out, um, supplements. Um, but I, I can't help but think about this, being a consumer, being a patient somewhere, all of us should be, if we're not, seeing a provider, of course, for at least annual blood work and other screening um, tests as well. But 
we, some people may hear this, you know, this and say, see, that can happen. I can get on a diuretic and, and I could, you know, urinate out the most important nutrients I need. And it's going to make me off balance. And see, that's a reason why I don't need to be on the blood pressure medicine, or I don't need to treat the reflux, or I don't need to treat um, the underlying heart disease and, and diabetes, because, you know, so many drugs, if not all of them, right, has some sort of side effect for someone out there. That doesn't mean I'm gonna have the same one, but you can have the side effect for it. Um, but as a physician, and, and we wanna have a balanced conversation here, and of course this conversation um, is for general educational purpose only for more specific information. I, and I know Dr. Ratner would and certainly advise you to speak with your own personal provider, but make the case that there are times, right, where people do need to be adamant in making sure they're getting proper treatment and not necessarily take important, vital, relevant, and timely information that you're giving as an excuse not to go to the physician and not to take the medication the doctor is starting them off on. That means they always need to stay there because, you know, some people are like, see, Dr. Ratner said it on Let's Talk America Radio. I don't need to take that medication. Yeah. So, you know, look, the PPIs, the medicine that, that I told you I was taking and which landed me in the emergency room, um, when you take, if you have chronic acid reflux and you, you're taking a PPI, they provide tremendous relief. Okay. Oh. But interestingly, uh, and so, you know, it's not, people, people won't resist taking a PPI. The problem is actually the opposite with PPIs. People are too eager to take them because they're so effective. Another medication though, that I think is really important to mention, which creates the same risk of deficiency for B12 and magnesium is metformin. And metformin is the most commonly prescribed drug for type two diabetes. Now, you don't feel anything if you have type two diabetes. Your doctor just says, hey, your sugar's out of control. I want you on this medication. You may not feel any different at all on that medication, but you could have the same risk of B12 and magnesium deficiency. But I'll tell you one thing though, metformin's a terrific drug. It, it really does help control blood sugar, but your doctor has to keep a close eye on you. So, you know, having a good working relationship with your primary care provider is absolutely mm. crucial um, mm. for all medications. Uh, I mean, I could spend an hour here talking about all of the, there's all the different Dr. Ratner, we have a small break, a technical glitch, and hopefully he'll be back on soon. Long list of drug-induced nutrient depletions. Uh, the ones we are focused on at Therologics are those two drugs I've mentioned, the PPIs, uh, those acid-blocking drugs for, for reflux and heartburn, and then metformin, because they both, both of those drugs will block magnesium and B12. I see. And so important, like you're saying, to have that conversation with the pharmacist or physician. Absolutely. Um, and I can't help but also making sure that we're talking about not just the medication, but what we're eating. Right. Because you said that may be a good idea, perhaps to have, um, you know, certain fruits or add certain things. Or I guess in some situations as well, Dr. Ratner, not to eat certain foods because perhaps it could make some things unbalanced, I would imagine. Um, well, not so much in terms of the depletion issue, but yeah, that can happen as well. Um, so interestingly with the, with the, with the acid blocking medications yes. and, and the loss of B12 and magnesium absorption, you can't get enough from your diet to correct that lack of absorption. So what I do, because I'm still on the Prilosec, I'm the prisoner okay. of Prilosec. What I do is I take relatively high doses of both B12 and magnesium safe. They're not super high. But okay. they're higher doses than I could get in, in dietary intake. Uh, and I take a special form, which is highly absorbable um, to make sure that I don't get into trouble again, like I did. Um, so let me, you know, I'll just quickly mention the, uh, the ebook, okay. which you can get. It's a free download if somebody is interested in getting that. Um, mm. And it's, it's the name of the book is The Prisoner of Prilosec. Um, which is sort of the jokingly uh, uh, a little embarrassed way that I, I sort of tell my story. But uh, we covered not only what happened to me, but uh, tips for diet and lifestyle management of acid reflux and uh, heartburn. 
Uh, if you're on a PPI, how to stay out of trouble. And the, the download is available uh, at, you can just go to the website, pphelp.org, okay. Um, And the book's a free download. Oh, very good. Thank you so much for that information. Sure. Before you leave us, I don't want us to overlook what may be obvious to you or myself or others out there. Um, and that is when these side effects from a nutritionist depletion come from being on certain medications or supplements, what should a patient do? Because some people may say, well, I'll wait a few hours to see if I'm feeling better. Um, does it depend on the degree of the side effects? Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, look, magnesium if it gets low enough, uh, if you have a very, very low magnesium, you're gonna develop seizures, okay? Magnesium is critical for the electrical function of our nerves. And that, that may be the nerves in the heart that uh, allow the heart to beat yes. uh, co in a coordinated way, or it could be the nerves in your brain or the nerves uh, in, in your muscles that lead and control your muscles. So people can get muscle spasms if they have low magnesium, they can get seizures, they can get abnormal heart rhythms. Um, yeah, I mean, some of these things are um, sudden, like mine was sudden. Uh, a B12 deficiency, though, tends to come on much more gradually. Okay. Um, you know, you may just feel run down. You just may feel weak and you have no energy. Uh, and then you go to the doctor and find out you're anemic. Um, and you may be anemic because your B12 is low. Um, so it, it really does depend on the nutrient and how severe the deficiency is. I see. So certainly keep an eye on that. And if need be, call 911 or get to an ER as soon as possible. Uh, if it's sudden. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Certainly. And I know there has been some concern that sometimes people have been hesitant to seek emergency care due to COVID. But I, I'm so sure, sir, you're saying if it's something potentially dangerous, such as side effects to any medication that people should not hesitate due to um, ER load and demand, but try to get themselves treated because obviously it could be potentially fatal if not addressed? Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I don't think anybody needs to be afraid of getting necessary medical help in an emergency because the, because the ER may be a dangerous place. It's really, it's, it's not, um, look, in certain, in certain areas of the country where right now, I mean, it's, it's October 6th, okay, um, in certain areas of the country, um, the numbers are really bad, but um, even in those areas, it's still safe to go to the emergency room if you need to. Absolutely. Certainly, definitely, because again, there are things that are fatal out there, and we certainly want to address that as well. Dr. Yeah. Rath, what a wonderful conversation about a very important topic, our health, our bodies, uh, the medication we are taking to help us along the way, and when there are hiccups in that medication, and like you said, a depletion of very important nutrients and other things we need to keep an eye on. I know you mentioned the website before, the free uh, ebook that's downloadable. I love it. We love freebies here on Let's Talk America Radio, but where, give Give us uh, that website one more time where our um, international sure. viewers can go. Um, for the ebook, it's PPI Help. PPI stands for Proton Pump Inhibitor, but it's P P I H E L P dot O R G. Yes. Uh, and we actually also have a, uh, an ebook for, for anybody who's taking metformin oh. for diabetes um, who wants to sort of learn about what the pitfalls might be as well which is just metformin, M-E-T-F-O-R-M-I-N, help.org. So metforminhelp.org or ppihelp.org. Wow, great information. Of course, um, both of those uh, drug types or drugs obviously are well uh, prescribed. There are certainly a lot of people on it because uh, diabetes and epilepsy reflux are very common here um, in the United States and abroad. What a great conversation. We certainly appreciate you joining us out of Randall. Always come back on. We're going to have to continue this conversation. For those that are My watching pleasure. us, thank you, sir. For those that are watching us, thank you so much. Continue, of course, to stay tuned in to Let's Talk America Radio. We offer real talk for real people. You can connect with us anytime. Our episodes, be it video or audio, are on 
demand 24 hours a day. That means it meets your schedule. For additional information, visit ltaradio.com. That's ltaradio.com. Or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, you name it. Hashtag LTA Radio. That's LTA Radio. Stay safe, everyone. And we shall see you soon with another upcoming interesting and intriguing episode of Let's Talk America Radio. Such a pleasure to have you on again, doctor. And we will see you soon. Thanks, Dr. Ratner. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Shana. Bye-bye.